here we go. So the recording is running. Very good. Welcome everybody to this webinar on how to find and how to groom our successors as club officers. I will spend the next five to ten minutes showing you my ideas on the topic. After that we will have the chance to talk to each other answer all your questions and your ideas and look into your ideas and in the very end we want to do a role play we'll do two role plays where we simulate how it is talking to potential candidates and let's kick off so and can you see the slides can you see the third slide with the word groom in the middle Yes, perfect. Okay, so in a perfect world, clubs and officer committees would start grooming their successes already in January. The idea is to work shadow for a half a year. Of course, this is not always possible, but the earlier we start with finding and grooming our successors, the better. This is what I want to remind everybody with this slide. And then, what I do now in my clubs is I tell them it's election time and I visualize the seven or eight club officer roles that we have. So interestingly, when you look into the club leadership manual, you, you see nice descriptions of all the club officer roles that we have, but you don't see any pictures or visualizations. This is why we asked our graphic people to come up with these pictures and we created two slides where we can very easily show people what the roles are and what the goals is and also come up with some time estimations how much time goes into each role so this is very handy where you can have a projector in your club meeting room and show them what club officer roles we have why they are important and then visualize them with, with these pictures of course, I will share this. It's already shared on our Google Drive, so you can uh, use this if you like, also in your clubs, visualizing the club officer roles. Then the next slide, this is something that I'm very keen on and very nerdy about. I like to plan lo long term. So I have tables like this where I just write down names, people that I got to know in, in also for, for division roles that I would like to see in a role. So this is how I start planning succession with long, long-term tables. The next thing, this is something that I learned from one of my mentors. So when we go into thinking who could be a club officer, don't overlook any gray mice. So there are sometimes members that you when you look at them in the first place, you wouldn't see them as a, as a leader, as a president, VPE or something, but look into your, t your whole roster, club roster, and see who could be something. And oftentimes you are really surprised how people grow when they take a role. So don't overlook the gray mouse, mice. And of course... Sorry, uh, excuse me, Andre, yes. can I ask a question? Yes, please. Okay, I don't know why you call it gray mice, because uh, in other contexts, in a demographic context, gray mice means people who are aging. Did you mean that? Or you uh, no, 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 I do okay. not. Uh, thanks not thanks, thanks for bringing this up. So it's, it's not about age or any discrimination. It's just people that maybe are a bit shy or that are not stars like this. So usually you go first for people like this, dream team people, stars, people that shine, that are extroverted, that look strong, but also don't forget people like this. Okay. The whole message here and yeah, thanks for, yeah, thanks for interrupting me at this point. Okay, so then you think, you know, I, I come up with my list of a dream team, people that would like to see in an officer role and then I start reaching out to them. And now it's how to motivate them. And of course, people show reluctance. Everybody is super busy. Every is, everybody is stressed. The work life is, is harder than ever. And putting an, another pressure or effort on this doesn't feel the right thing for most people. So the next step is to motivate them. On this slide, you have a whole list of things that you could 
uh, tell people to motivate them. I, the ones that I like best are here in, in bold. So for example, you can discover hidden talents or you can open up to new growth and development in your life. What I personally like very much because Toastmasters clubs are like small companies. When you change something, when you start an initiative, you immediately see an, an impact, a positive effect or a negative effect. When you compare this to working in a large organization, a large company, multinational company, it's often not, not like this. So it can be very beautiful and enriching for the individual to actually own the work, own the results, see direct impact. And every person reacts on something else. And with this slide, we have a nice menu to pick from. And we will see hopefully in the web, in the role play that we do later, uh, what, what works and, and for different individuals. Then you can also remind them of the Toastmasters promise. The Toastmasters promise, for years I looked at it and said, oh, this is too American, it just doesn't work in Europe. But when you really take time, and I, I do this with my clubs, so sometimes I just print out the promise and then we read through it or we do table topics on it to, to understand why we have this. And there is this one central sentence. Uh, so when you are asked to be a club officer, you, you should do it. So some, for some people it works when you remind them of the promise that they gave when they became a member. And <laughs> what we do in our corporate club is we like, of course, to charm people into becoming club officers. And we develop this email where we send them, so when they are on our list, uh, we send them this message, you are chosen. Dear Meredith, we would love to see you in the role of president as VPE. And this is usually the first step that we do. We send them this message and then we pick up the phone and call them or we talk to them in person. So the best way is to charm people into becoming a club officer. Of course, the usual first reaction is reluctance. And there are different ways to deal with this. One is message of a former international president of Toastmasters, a tough sentence. So if everybody would say no we wouldn't have any clubs we wouldn't have any grow we wouldn't have an organization at all so for some people this a tough way of convincing works and then there is the other one uh, way more charming in his case it totally changed his life and he saw it as a very fulfilling thing to take a new challenge and step up take take over responsibility Again, all these slides, all the material will be available right after the webinar for you. Okay, and then how to get things done. Ideally, you run the elections in your first regular club meeting of the man month of May. Remember, the new people come in on 1st of July. So first meeting of May would be ideal to do this. The leadership manual tells us here that you should have a nominating committee. The chair is the immediate past president and there are three more members that form this committee and that run the election. And this is already the end of my part where I give you the input and it, now I would like to open the floor for your questions and remarks, please. So I have a question. Yes, Christina. Uh, yes, this is very relevant to me because uh, yes, it looks like uh, I only have a few weeks. I'm the past president of Walk the Talk, so I need to chair the next election meeting. Yes. So that's going to be like May 13th. Um, so yes, I would appreciate any guidelines, any rule book, uh, whatever. And ideally, I guess huh, I should take this presentation and present it to my club, right? I would do that, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, present it to the club officer team, the existing club officer team, to, to make them ready to uh, how to motivate people, how to charm people, but also how to deal with reluctance. And I strongly recommend showing to the whole club these two slides where we explain them why we have the roles, why they are important, and also what they can learn and how they can benefit from each role. Yes. 
And uh, uh, what do you say when they say, oh, I don't know what this role involves. I mean, we can tell them briefly, but yes. then uh, after that, it's up to the ex officers for each role to shadow and to overlap and help these people once they get started? Ideally, yes, yes. That would be ideal that they you, you close them in the first meeting of May and then they immediately start work shadowing the the predecessors, correct. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I know that I won't have time to separately present it first to uh, to my committee. Mm -hmm. I was thinking already uh, in the next club meeting in mm -hmm. May, we only have one club meeting a week, uh, yes. a month, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, that I would already present these slides to the whole club. Yes. I might have previously sent out an email to the uh, club officers, mm -hmm. get some moral support, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so um, does, does it mean that um, I should cancel speeches for that evening? It's a tough decision, but I would do this, yes, because it's so important to yeah, survive as a club, to have this. And if this is necessary, um, yeah, I would do that. It's tough, but I would do this. And this brings me to another point. So from time to time, I invest a whole 60 minutes of a regular club meeting to do three things. We look together into the Toastmasters promise so that everybody, the longstanding members, but also the new joiners are on the same page and understand why we have the promise. Then we look into the seven club officer roles, why they are important. And then we also explain in more detail our meeting roles. For example, why do we have a grammarian? Why are we so keen on filler words? And also tell them how to perform in a very good way in these. So it's tough to sacrifice precious meeting time for that people want to use for stage time. But once or twice a year, 60 minutes is a really good investment to explain important things like this is how we run our Toastmasters clubs and why every bit and piece makes so much sense. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Toastmasters concept has been around for 90 years and for me, I compare it with the human body. So every piece that we have, it's, it's, it's perfectly evolved and it makes sense. You can't live in a good way without a thumb, for example. And this is what our members it's good when they understand that every bit and piece, all the crazy traditions that we have in a big picture at Toastmasters, it makes a lot of sense. That was a very long answer. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. It is sacrificing a, a, a speech meeting. Yes. What I could do is uh, have someone ready to be on standby to be uh, table topics. So yes. that uh, leftover evening, no? we, could, uh, yeah. evening we could do some spontaneous talking. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you. Yes. So, sorry, you said um, you present three things in the 60 minutes, the TM promise, mm -hmm. seven top officer roles, and the third thing was the grammarian counter stuff. Yes, the regular meeting roles okay. and their importance and how to perform in these roles in a good way. Okay. How to add quality and value in these roles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then Can one I more, ask, yeah. please, Edmond, yes. Uh, so, I'm the president of a newly, well, we're, we're almost getting chartered now. Mm -hmm. We have all the members and all that. Mm -hmm. um, so, my question is, which one of, not which one, which are the most important uh, of the club officers roles, let's say, if, if we can't fill all, all six of them, uh, yes. which are the most important ones? So my experience, I started uh, three clubs that survived and one club that did not. I have a, a personal rule, I don't start a new club when I don't have the seven on board. The probability that you will survive is, is, is too low especially imagine some of them drop out and then maybe you have only five, four, three people left. So I say really push for the seven and also don't forget the two club mentors and two club sponsors, which ideally are from outside. So all in all, it's um, when we count this together, 11 people that start a successful startup team. If you really want to take the risk and go for it, we see the three most important roles, the president, the VPE, the membership guy. And 
then of course you need the, sec the sergeant arms to book the rooms and prepare the rooms secretary and vp pr yeah can be done all by the vp membership but it will be tough and also the treasurer should be on board so and this is again yeah motivate people to do something and the good thing about these small roles is they are not very time consuming so the secretary here i say five minutes per week it's just a few admin tasks sergeant at arms of course you have to be there to prepare the room but you can delegate this so it's not the idea that you are there for 12 months all the time you never go on holiday and always prepare the room just make sure that the room is prepared by somebody as the treasurer it's collecting money twice a year two hours would be something so i really encourage you to when you have seven people allocate a little bit of work to all of them you have some flexibility here in how you allocate. This is just an idea that Toastmasters give you how they can split the work. But uh, please split the work. It makes so much sense. Because I told you, everybody is stressed. Everybody is very busy in the day jobs. Uh, let's put the workload on as many pairs of shoulders as possible. A follow-up question, Edmond. Does this help? Yes, I think it does. Uh, I know we need to have the the full team on board, yes. yeah. um, but sometimes, especially with the newer clubs like, like us, um, yeah. we don't have a lot of experienced members. Yes. Uh, so it's kind of hard to put everyone in, in a position uh, to come on board and get into the club of team. We we will of course try, mm -hmm. but uh, like. Uh, session at arms. Uh, I act as the president, but usually I am the one going there and preparing the room and all that. So it's it's not such a big deal to have someone at the moment yes. for that position. Uh, but yes, the membership and PR can be combined as well, <clears throat> especially now that we're not um, we don't have so many members and uh, so much progress with the. Mm -hmm. With education, so. I see. I see. For, for Can I ask you, are you in a remote place or are there other Toastmasters clubs around you, existing? <coughs> there, there is another Toastmasters club around, actually. Yes. There are. They've, they've okay. already been very, very helpful. But when yeah. you are starting a new club, uh, you're only allowed to have, to have up to three of the 20 members to be dual membership. Ah, I see. I see. Okay. It's okay for other guys to come and uh, do speeches, mm -hmm. uh, but but from the members, only three can be dual membership. Uh, of which one of them is is, is myself because okay. I wanted to have access to the pathways. I so see. I had to join in order to have the material to distribute to the, to the other club members at least at the beginning to start to kind of start doing icebreakers. Around. Okay. Okay. Very good. Yes, just one more recommendation. So when there are other Toastmasters clubs around them, please be very open and transparent that you plan to start a new club and encourage them to visit you as often as possible over the first two years. This is really something that I also learned. It's um, very uh, from my experience, that, uh, I, uh, yeah. you need four experienced Toastmasters members to start a new club that come regularly, that bring in quality, that bring in the knowledge. With less, it's, yeah, it's like a lottery game. You can survive when you find the right new joiners, but it's, the probability is, is lower. I, and I, for me, I have it as a rule. Then I, I have to show more patience, maybe do more PR and wait half a year longer until I have the people on board and then start it. But uh, yeah, good luck. And please keep us posted how it goes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, then over to the others. Are there still questions, remarks on what I just showed you? I know some of it is quite unconventional and... Um, yeah, Andreas. I want to congratulate you on these fantastic slides. Mm -hmm. Normally, I hate TMI slides. They are dull, they are boring, they are black and white or gray. Mm -hmm. And all they have is small print with uh, bullet points, but small print, lots of words. So this is fantastic. Please tell us uh, who drew those caricatures for you, um, that sort of thing. 
You mentioned somebody drew the caricatures for you. Yes, this was uh, this is from you, our company UBS. So we have a creative team in Krakow. We told them what we need, and they came up with this. Yeah. So it's because UBS supports your club, so you had someone to turn to to ask for this help. Yes, we were very lucky. We had a, a lady that was it was yeah she knew the people and she knew that the service is around. So we were very lucky. But uh, now, uh, please feel free to copy, paste this, and use it yourself. By the way, all the us. other uh, graphics are from Google Search, so hopefully nobody. Okay. Okay. Have right. you have you heard of Haiku Deck? I did not know. Um, H a i k u mm -hmm. d e c k dot com. Yes. And they have fantastic pictures there and uh, images. Uh -huh. that you can take and easily copy and paste into um, a PowerPoint. And then you can just add one or two uh, uh, title words in there. Um, okay. it's, a, it's a paying thing. Uh, it costs, I don't know, it costs about 120 francs a year. Mm -hmm. uh, I just stopped my membership, but I was using it for a couple of years because I make a lot of professional slides for my own yeah, training yes. business. So I found them uh, very helpful. And in fact, my question was, if I ever made any slides of my own for Toastmasters, it's okay to, to import images from other places and all that. It's not a, against Toastmaster rule or anything, or you're not sure? I'm not sure, no. Okay. For today, I just did it. So when I need something, I, I use the photo search of Google and, and just put it in. Mm -hmm. um, can I just ask one more question? Yeah, I don't please. know Edmund and I don't know Lillian. So if we could just introduce each other, I'm Christina Kwok and um, I'm one of the officers of Walk the Talk, which meets at Impact Hub in uh, Zilke in Zurich. I have no idea where Edmund and Lillian are from. Are you also in the Zurich area? Should I go ahead first? Actually, no, we're from Cyprus. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So basically, I'm currently serving as the administration manager for District 109. That's how I got to meet Andreas. And I really enjoy his workshops, which is why I joined up. And actually, I invited Edmund to, to come tonight. I'm very glad he came. And I will let Edmund tell you a few things about himself now. So Lillian, you're in Cyprus? Yeah, Cyprus. Thank you. On the, the Greek side or the Turkish side? Greek side. So far, we only have clubs on the Greek side. Okay, let's, um, can we quickly go to Edmund and then we start uh, sorry, sorry. Yes, uh, role plays? Yes. Hi, I'm Edmund. I'm from Cyprus as well. I used to live in uh, London, so I joined a few uh, clubs. Uh, I joined the club there when I was uh, out there. So when I'm back in Cyprus, I... I joined the, the club that's uh, here with us, Limas of Toastmasters. But uh, because they are quite formal, I, I wanted something more informal and more casual, let's say. So um, one of the members there started this new club, we're called Positive Minds. And I've kind of, uh, they, they have some issues, so they, they took a step back. And I took over and I've, uh, I've grown the club now to, to a point where we're ready to, to be chartered. Super. Super. Thank you very much. There is a fifth person on the call, Vegeta. Would you also like to quickly tell us something about you? Okay, no worries. I take this as a no. So let's do the two role plays. We start with Edmond again. So I quickly tell you who you are in this role play. You are, you came to Toastmas because you are only interested in the communication education you want to do public speaking and you look at yourself and say you are not a club leader so i will now try to convince you into becoming a club officer hello edmond we are coming to the end of the toastmasters year and as you know we rotate the seven club officer roles if we are looking for members that will take on a club officer role and it would be great if you could be our new vice president of education what do you think oh my god i'm not sure i can do that mm -hmm. um I, I don't think i'm very familiar with the education path and I, i'm just interested in doing speeches and kind of progressing i'm not sure i can i can uh, help anyone in that in that role mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, yeah, I can understand this. Maybe if there is a role that is more easy, let's say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, we, we know each other now for 12 months. We saw you perform on stage. Uh, we, we also, we like you and um, please be aware that we, we picked you for a reason. So we said, okay, Edmund, he would be a great vice president of education. He can really motivate our members. So this is why we, we picked you to, to tell you this. And I think you should give it a try. I think this is a growth opportunity. Also maybe in a field that you haven't discovered so far. I'm flattered by your words, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not so confident myself. Uh, I see. Uh, maybe if some more time would give, be given to me, so I can be more familiar with the mm -hmm. with the process, or maybe shadow someone. Yes, I would feel more confident with that. Mm -hmm. So our plan is to run the elections for the new roles in early May. And you know, the new Toastmasters start, year starts on the 1st of July. So there is almost two months where you could work Shadow Lillian, which is currently holding the role. So there are two months where you overlap and where you can uh, spend time with her, learn about what she does and be ready for the role. And of course, Lillian is not uh, leaving the club. She will also be there when you are, when you take office. I would feel more comfortable with that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Let's uh, stop this first role play here and go to the second scenario. I will play with Christina. Christina is uh, self-employed. She has her own business. And in the next Toastmasters year, she really wants to focus on building uh, her business. And I try to make her, in this case, an area director. So let's kick this off. Hello, Christina. Um, we Hello, Maria. How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. Thanks. And uh, Christina, we would love to see you in the role of an area director. Oh, gee, Andreas. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. Why? Tell me. Tell me. Mm, because I'm very busy. I know. Yes. So tell me more, what, what will happen in the next Toastmasters year in your life and business life? Uh, well, uh, on the Toastmaster level, I hope to concentrate more on my speeches. Yes. And uh, I've already served three years consecutively as a, a club officer in my club. It's only a small club, mm -hmm. but still has taken a lot of time, energy, and, uh, well, and resources. And I'm thinking now I need to... Uh, take that time back uh, to focus more on my on my own work mm -hmm. my speeches and then my business i see i see yeah of course we come to you christina because we especially look for former club presidents vpes that have had important roles already that know the toastmasters concept very good to share this knowledge with other clubs and when it comes to doing more speeches in a role of an area director, you do these club visits and they often ask you to do five to seven minute speeches on various topics, for example, on mentoring, on how to find and groom club officers. So there is always the chance also to speak in front of other audiences and of course make it a manual speech. So there are plenty of opportunities where you have different audiences and opportunities to speak. I will think about it. <laughs> and uh, then something else, yeah, please yes. go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, who, who would mentor and, and support me if I agree? Yes, yes. So the current plan is you get appointed in uh, now, and then we go to Genoa. There will be a whole afternoon of training for the incoming area directors. We will also run an additional two hour session here in Zurich where you can meet the four area directors that worked together this year and learn about the strategy that we'll have in Division E. And of course, there will be a handover with your predecessor in the role to have a nice transition from, from you to the new club, uh, to the new, uh, yeah, from one area director to the other. This is really what we learned that we have to make sure that we can hold all the know-how that was built up and transfer it to the new person.
So this is, I will personally, in my role as immediate past division director, um, ensure that we do a very good handover. Okay, all right. It's, <laughs> it's worth thinking about. Yes, yes. And something else comes to my mind, Christina, as you know, uh, and, you, and I know from you that you also are interested in working with large corporations. So maybe there is another interesting role in our Division E Council because our growth currently comes from corporate clubs. So we have Google Zurich, we have KPMG, we have Accenture. They all want to form their corporate clubs. So maybe the role of Division E club growth director would even fit your needs better. So we have a nice, uh, you have some synergies that maybe also help your, your, your business. But yeah, I mean, uh, I've seen your email that does interest me a lot. I was going to send you an email to reply to suggest that we have a phone call after the uh, Easter holidays are over. Mm -hmm. I'm making my list of questions now. That is very interesting for me because, yeah, I want to talk to more corporates, find out what they're thinking, understand their psychology too, so that I can you know, help mm -hmm. me in my own business. So uh, mm -hmm. that's a definitely uh a win-win thing I'm thinking about. Yes, yes. Win-win. Perfect. This is the end. Your last carrot was very good. <laughs> <laughs> Super. This is the end of role play number two. So again, we have five more minutes to go. Is there anything, any questions that popped up or any remarks now after the role plays that you want to share? Um, so Andres, I have, I mean, obviously I have uh, logistical questions uh, about, yes. so between now and my next club meeting, yes. what do I do? I send emails out to, is there, is there a rule book or not? I send emails out to alert the, all the club officers, look, we're going to have a election meeting in May, and then uh, we're going to ask for uh, nominations. Is this from just the club officers or from the whole club or... And then I put that in Google Docs so people can access and put names and second uh, nominations, that sort of thing. Yes, I would do it like this. Yeah, uh, reach out to the club officer team first, tell them the roadmap that you have, and then inform the club members that something is going on, also the opportunities that they have. But as I said, please also have your dream team list ready. So have an idea who could be in which role, and and run the whole process in a, in a structured way. So don't expect too many volunteers for the roles. Maybe you're lucky and you have all of them. You have people that are really keen to become a VPE or president. But to my experience, you really have to sell the roles and then it makes sense to have your list of your personal dream team and then in a systematic way, reach out to them and ask them, would you like to be a candidate, a nominee for this role? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, 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 so there's no fixed book or template. I just have to sort of, yeah, write whatever I want to in Word, that sort of thing, and send it out. Yes, yeah. And, and this, this idea of who the dream team is, I mean, uh, I need to ask my club, uh, my, my club officers, right? I mean, I can throw out some names and then send out an email and ask them what they think, ask them to add to it, that sort of thing. Yeah, I would, yeah that's a good way, yeah. Um, do this as a group um, activity, uh, discuss who you would see in that roles, and yeah, and do, do it as a team. also nominate themselves if they want to. Of course, of course, yes, yes. And okay. yeah, when we look at this, so I also like to, so it's good to have three people that are existing club officers, they, they stay with the team, and you bring in three or four new people. That's a good thing. So I see clubs, they always have the same seven people rotating. Um, try to bring in fresh people all the time, starting with the easier roles, VPPR, Secretary, Sergeant at Arms, Treasurer, and of course have a bit more senior people in, in these three key roles. Yeah. Um, I think for me, the toughest role mm -hmm. for me personally, as well as for others, mm -hmm. is the VP education because he or she has to come up the curve pretty quickly with a easy speak. It's not easy. I know. Yeah. No, this is the most time consuming role, the VP education. Please, everybody be very um, attentive to the person that takes this, do a proper handover. And... Also, it's a, it's a lot of work. And what we learned now from our clubs, it's good to have an eighth in, 
inofficial role yes. called the Vice President Mentoring. So one of the key things a VPE does is motivate people to continue with their projects in, in pathways and in the traditional project or uh, Toastmasters education program. And then it's good to have a second person that is making sure that every member has a mentor that they stay motivated. So try to organize additional support for this role or this person should delegate some of the many tasks he or she has. Okay, okay. I, I know this question came up before when you're talking about mentoring. So yes. the fact that this is not an officially recognized role within TMI and therefore yes. can no credit. So how do you, how do you sell it? <sighs> Creativity. Um, what or might it get formalized? Creativity and improvising. Um, so ask for somebody that has passion for it, that likes to coordinate and delegate. That could be a person. Then it could be maybe the immediate past president that is very much attached to the success of the club um, or some person that is yeah, rather new to the club and is getting ready for a club of the role. Be open to them. They won't get official recognition, but as soon as they step up 12 months later or they, they can be a club officer and then get recognition. But it, tell them that mentoring is key and it helps us so much and it would just be great to support the VPE with this important task. I think also it's a good to create a, a culture of uh, a team and working together towards getting the club, maybe distinguished club, maybe getting points towards that and just have a feeling of, of a group and a team kind of effort. Yes. So yes. it's easier for people to take on roles even if they're not uh, recognized. Yeah. Very good point, very good point. And also don't forget to celebrate. So often we are struggling, we fight to survive, but come together as a club of the team, the seven, eight people meet for dinner and also celebrate the successes that you have and, and make it a fun thing serving as one of the seven or eight people. Yeah, don't forget to celebrate and <laughs> to party. Okay, good. One more minute to go. Any more questions before we close the webinar? Um, yeah, I, I would like to ask about mentoring. Um, I know we said that it's sort of like the VPE's job to make a list of uh, new members and existing members and then pair them up with mentors. I mean, is that the best way to do things? Or do you also try to approach members and find out who do you think you have personal chemistry with? Would you like to uh, choose the person you want to mentor, approach them directly, and then whatever's left over, we'll try to assign them in a more mechanical way, that sort of thing. <laughs> so the second thing you mentioned is the best one. It's about chemistry. People should put uh, to, to pick their mentors and mentees. That's ideal. However, when your club doesn't have a mentoring scheme yet to just get started, it's a good way to just come up with a proposal, like the dream team here. And, and match them. And then, of course, there is some flexibility when they say, okay, this match doesn't make sense. They can change this, but structure it in a good way and then allow them to choose. Super. Okay. This is the end of our webinar. Thanks for joining us so shortly before Easter. Uh, I recorded this webinar. We will make it available on our Google Drive. I will share the link to the recording and also share the slides with you. Thank you very much and enjoy your Easter break. Thank, Thank you very all. much, Andreas. Very yeah. good webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. Yes, so I will stay on the call, of course, if you want to say something, but the recording is stopped. Bye. Yes. Okay. You will send us the, um, the slides as well, right? Yes, yes, I will. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Andreas. Have a Thank good afternoon. Okay. Day for you. Likewise. Congratulations. Congratulations once again, Andreas. It was as good as I expected. <laughs> so very good. Lillian. Yeah, very good. Very interesting. I think I'm. I'm very glad that somebody I recommended it to was able to come and benefit from it. And I will encourage other club presidents to see the recording. Yes. Yes. Very. Yeah. Okay. Super. No. No. This is what we learned from the first webinar. It has a long-lasting effect. Uh, we share it, people watch it, we can refer to it all 
again and again very good. And please don't forget the 25th of April, where we will have another webinar on the first steps on pathways. Pathways. Looking forward to that too. Right. I have that in mind as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Nice meeting you, Christina.